This week on Maker Update, a freeform LED ball, a preview of Alt Control GDC, rolling your own image sensor, touchy triangles, cardboard Sith craft, hydro dipping, and optical punching. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, back from CES with another Maker Update this week. Just your standard awesome Maker Update. It's actually really good because it's been a while since I've done one of these and I've got a lot to catch you up on. So let's get started with the project of the week. I've shown you the work of Jiri Prow and his intricate circuit sculptures a number of times. He's back with this incredible programmable LED sphere. He noticed how at the end of last year, people were going crazy for animated LED cubes made from printed circuit boards. But as the guru of freeform circuit design, Jiri figured he was in a unique position to make a sphere. To create the design, he first created a 3D printed jig that holds the surface mount LEDs in place. He then uses brass wire sized to a template to create rings that alternate polarity back and forth, soldered directly to the LEDs. It's painstaking work, especially when you consider that you can't let your soldering iron linger too long without burning the LED or the plastic jig that's holding everything together. But things get really crazy when he hand solders the data pins between each LED using small sections of brass wire. The jig doesn't help him with that, and there are 194 LEDs in this design. But when he puts it all together, driven by an ESP32 board and a battery pack in the middle, the results look stunning. You can find the instructions, code, template, and files for the 3D printing jig all on Jiri's Instructable. It's time for some news. Gama Sutra has announced the list of the crazy maker-made arcade games that will be joining the All Control Showcase at this year's Game Developer Conference in March. The showcase always brings out some interesting and hilarious hardware that uses novel ways to interact with the game. This year we'll be seeing giraffes that you can stretch, multiplayer submarine hardware, chariot racing, a dog game where you can navigate by smell, a hugging machine, and competitive cow milking. You can find the full list in the video description and with any luck, we'll have another special edition of Maker Update for all control. Now for more projects and the running theme here is projects that require incredible patience. This time it's Sean Hodgins, who made his own camera image sensor by soldering 1,024 tiny light sensors onto a PCB by hand. According to Sean, just that part alone was two and a half hours of solid work. The rest of the camera is comprised of a small screen, a shutter button, a micro SD card slot, and a battery holder. The housing is 3D printed and can hold a standard lens. The resulting image is just one kilopixel, so it's pretty tiny, and it's more of an engineering feat than a practical project Still, it's cool to know that it's even possible to roll your own image sensor, and I've never seen a project quite like it. Sean includes all the resources you need to recreate it on his Instructable. I also love this interactive lightboard project by Haiwan Shin, Yu Jung Ko, and Jun Sung Yi. Using laser cut triangles of diffused acrylic and 3D printed cavities behind them that hold the NeoPixels and tactile switches, the team created an infinitely expandable lightboard. By pressing on a triangle, you can cycle through different colors until you release it. The images you create have a cool voxel 3D look to it. Again though, there's no small amount of work that goes into making something like this. I have to imagine that each triangle here takes at least a few hours of printing, cutting, gluing, soldering, and connecting. Fortunately, the documentation on this project is outstanding. So if you do take it on, at least you won't get lost. Finally, for a low tech labor of love, you have to check out this papercraft Sith Wayfinder from the latest Star Wars movie made by Juke B1. All you need for this one is some cardboard, some paper, a hot glue gun, and a cheap LED lamp. The result is really cool. Even if you've never seen the movie, the template, photos, and video are all available using the link in the show notes. Now for some tools and tips on Tested, Jen Schachter has a video going over some of her favorite tools of the year. A lot of them, like these Clico pliers, were new to me and worth checking out. XYZ Aiden has a guide on how to use 3D printed forms to shape recycled cardboard pulp. It's a great guide and I think it's a cool way to empower students to take direct action on creating things with recycled materials. Through a tweet from Geek Mom Projects, I learned about Glow Silk LED Fiber Yarn made by a company called Effulgent. It's like if you took fairy light LED strand and shrunk it down to the diameter of a thread. It looks like a neat option for wearables and costumes. Adam Savage and Jen Schachter have a video on how to apply a fake carbon fiber finish on 3D printed props using a process called hydro dipping. 
There's a great tip in here on how to create seams on the finish by sealing your first half in a clear coat before dipping the second half. On the Cool Tools channel, Shawn Michael Reagan shows off an affordable optical punch set. It's an ingenious system for when you need to make very precise marks on material. I'd never seen one before, so I figured you'd be into it. And in the latest issue of Gareth Bramlin's Tips, Tools, and Shop Tales newsletter, there's some great tips on etching metal with a 9 volt battery and driving bolts with a pencil eraser. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, they've got a video up on getting started with using a breadboard. I know for a lot of us it's old hat, but I also remember when I first got started in electronics how mysterious and puzzling breadboards were. If that's where you are, then this video should be illuminating. All right, that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. If you missed this last episode, it published on Monday, so that was a little weird. It was a late episode, but very special because it came from CES. It was Tyler and I shooting on the show floor of the Consumer Electronics Showcase in Las Vegas. If you missed it, go check it out. A big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.